In this Remnant from the Ashes guide, I'm going to be showing you my Radiant Executioner build, which focuses on high crit chance and fire rate in order to shred boss health in seconds. It uses a mix of new items from the Subject 2923 DLC as well as old, but I'll show you how to use it at any level effectively, working your way up to its final form. It doesn't matter if you're looking for a beginner build or endgame build, you can use this one regardless. The Radiant Executioner build uses weapons with extremely fast fire rates and makes them even faster, pumping out critical hits more and more often because of the use of the Radiant Armor. Momentum gives you increased critical hit chance and critical hit damage each time you critically hit, maxing out at 30% critical hit chance and 30% critical hit damage. This is a huge boost and is easy to accomplish with this build because of the blazing fast fire rate that you will have. When you combine this with weak spot damage, you can destroy bosses very, very quickly. The most important part of this build is what weapons to use because you need a very high rate of fire in order to critically hit often. This is less important early on when you don't have the Radiant set, but it's best to acclimate yourself to how the build will work at endgame anyway. For this reason I suggest getting the submachine gun, the assault rifle, and if you really want, the Chicago typewriter early on. The submachine gun can be found in Ward 13, and the assault rifle and Chicago typewriter can be found on Earth, so you can get all these pretty fast. I like to use the Hunter's Mark weapon mod on the Assault Rifle or Chicago Typewriter since you'll be using one of those two weapons the most early on and having increased critical chance works well for this build. However, if you have the Fusion Rifle then you want to put this on your submachine gun or machine pistol. Additionally, you can use Phantom Knives as well to set bleeding on the enemy instead of Hunter's Mark if you're using the Polished Whetstone Amulet. If you have the Subject 2923 DLC, you'll want to get the Fusion Rifle from the final boss there because it's hands down the best weapon for this build and has an excellent modification that can rip huge chunks of health off bosses and one-shot tough enemies. The high fire rate we have helps speed the gun back up after using the fusion cannon in order to get back up to speed quickly, and then get off another fusion cannon burst. I also like the machine pistol found in the DLC as it also boasts an extremely fast rate of fire and can deal out a ton of damage in a hurry. Either use this one or the submachine gun in your secondary slot. Your melee weapon is unimportant as you won't melee often. The armor you want for this build early on is the Hunter set because it increases both range damage and weak spot damage by a significant amount. This is just a great all-around armor set that works well on any build. Later on in the game, once you get to Yesha, you'll get the Radiant chest and leg pieces from a vendor and get the Radiant head piece from a dungeon there. This will give you increased critical hit chance and critical damage, as well as reduced recoil, which helps control full auto weapons more easily. For your amulet, I highly recommend Gunslinger's Charm because it increases your fire rate and reload speed. We've already discussed why fire rate is important, but reload speed is needed to minimize the downtime between mags, and you'll tear through them quickly. Additionally, momentum only lasts 3 seconds in between crits, so if your reload takes too long then your buff will wear off and you'll lose out on damage. By having decent reload speed, you can ensure this doesn't happen. You can find this amulet on Earth, which is an added bonus. You can use the polished whetstone when facing bosses if you use the weapon mod fan of knives instead of hunter's mark. This will allow you 15% more critical chance if you hit the boss, and 50% more critical damage but is not very good in most other circumstances. For rings, there are four I can recommend for this build, and which you use is up to you. Braided Thorns. This ring gives you a flat plus 10% critical hit chance, as well as buffs your critical hit chance by 10% whenever you kill an enemy for 10 seconds. This gives you a total of 20% critical hit chance when this buff is up, which is great. This one can be found on Earth, so it's a good choice early on. Burden of the Gambler. This ring increases your critical hit chance by 15% and your critical damage by 25%, but you can no longer deal weak spot damage. It's a great ring for any crit build, but I suggest using only on bosses or when facing enemies that don't have a weak spot or one that is hard to hit. This one can be found on Earth as well, so you can get it really quickly. Just don't use it if you're using the Hunter set or you'll waste half of its bonus. Devouring Loop. This ring gives you a 6% chance that a critical hit will deal 4 times the damage. Ideally, you'd have a very high critical chance before using this ring and won't likely need it until you reach end game and have most of the pieces of this build. I like to swap this ring in and out with Burden of the Gambler depending on what boss I'm facing. Ring of the Mantis. This ring increases your fire rate by 15% and critical hit damage by 20% if you haven't moved for one second. This is an exceptional ring once you have the Radiant set and can really help to boost damage. I like to shoot for about 80-90% to 90 critical hit chance with all buffs up if possible. If you're going to be using the Devouring Loop, then you want to try to get to 100% if possible for maximum performance. For this reason, I like to pair it with Braided Thorns. However, you can also pair it with Burden of the Gambler if you wish. Traits play a vital role in determining how successful or not you are with this build, and in this section we'll cover the must-have traits. I'll put them in order of importance because it's hard to gauge what order you'll get them in, based on the somewhat randomness of the game. Executioner. This trait will boost your critical hit chance by 25% at max rank, which is exactly what this build needs and why it's first on the list. You need to get critical hits to make use of momentum, and this trait helps you do that. Trigger Happy. This trait increases your fire rate by 20%, which helps you get shots into your target more quickly, increasing the amount of critical hits you will deal. 
Fire rate and critical hit chance are the two most important stats for this build. Mind's Eye. This trait increases your ranged damage by 15%, which applies to all ranged attacks, whether they critically hit or not. This one is just above Kingslayer on my list because you won't critically hit with every shot. You should get this one at the end of your first playthrough. Kingslayer. This trait increases your critical hit damage by 25%, which helps to boost your overall DPS once you have a high crit chance. Not all shots you fire will crit, especially around in the game, or this one would be higher on the list. Exploiter. This trait increases your weak spot damage by 20%, and you should be aiming for the weak spot nearly every shot you fire. Some enemies don't have weak spots and others are hard to hit, or this one would be higher on the list. Note that you shouldn't take this trait if you plan to use Burden of the Gambler regularly. Handling. This trait helps you manage the recoil and spread of your bullets, which can be challenging with fully automatic weapons. Between this at max rank and the Radiant set, it should be a lot easier to hit your target in the weak spot repeatedly. Spirit. Mod power generation is important because you want to use your mods as often as you can. In boss fights, you get two or three fusion cannon shots off if you're quick enough, and this trait helps make that happen. Evocation. This trait will increase the damage of your fusion cannon and is excellent once you have the fusion rifle. This can make your fusion cannon mod hit for an extra 300 damage at max rank, which is not a small amount. Final tips. The fusion rifle has very good fire rate when at max charges, but these bleed off over time when you aren't damaging enemies. Make sure to use this weapon when you're fighting regularly and swap to something else like the assault rifle if not. You want to try and keep it at max charges 5 as often as you can for the best fire rate possible, which really boosts DPS. Try to use the fusion cannon mod on the fusion rifle after your first magazine has been spent. This will ensure all your crit buffs are maxed out and will all but guarantee it hits for a ton of damage. Then quickly fire away on your second mag and then use another one if necessary. You don't always have to use the fusion cannon because on some bosses hitting the weak spot faster may actually result in higher damage than using it, so you'll have to judge for yourself based on the boss you're facing. The Ice Fruit Consumable, which is part of the Subject 2923 DLC, increases your critical hit chance by 5% for 60 minutes even after death. This is a great consumable for this build since you need all the critical hit chance you can get, and it is relatively cheap at 500 scrap. Stock up on these if C-Bomb spawns in your campaign so that you have plenty to spare. Lastly, use the save analyzer to check which gear will drop when you roll a campaign or adventure so that you can farm the gear you need for this build easily, since many things drop randomly. This tool will tell you what bosses you will face, what events will happen, and what random equipment you will get and where it will be found. Keep re-rolling until you see the items you want and then go get them. Stay tuned for more Remnant from the Ashes builds as we explore what you can make with the new items added in Swamps of Corsus and Subject 2923 DLCs. And if you haven't already, be sure to check out our overviews of both DLCs if you are on the fence about picking them up.